And are you gonna say something about the wrappers or what? Sure, like Sir Nits a lot. Sir you mean Nitzelot. wrapping Sir Nits a lot? He likes big skeins that he cannot lie. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to Off Our Needles. I'm Tracy. I'm Jody, and we're the Grocery Girls. We are today. Short rows. Short rows. This is a biggie. You run into these a lot with your knitting. I feel like big projects and little projects, you can run into short rows, and there's all different kinds. I feel like they're game changers when it comes to shawls. Yes. No, when it comes to any of your knitting. I, I know I, they really do serve a purpose, and. Yeah. I mean, it's a bummer. The first time I came across a pattern with short rows, I didn't knit it because I was too afraid to do the short rows. So that's a bummer because they're really not difficult. They're not difficult. And we are going to talk about five different types. We are. Did you know I, there was even that many? Uh, no, I didn't. Not till today. I did I not know. I thought there was two. And I'm probably doing them both wrong because we know with the yarn overs, it's probably wrong. <laughs> anyway, today is all about short rows. Let's chat. Okay. Let's back up a sec. Okay. What exactly is a short row? Well, I love the term short row for one thing yeah. because it, it's very descriptive of what you do. You're actually only knitting across part of your stitches yes. on that row. So you're going to knit across part way and then stop and turn around and go back the other way. And you're basically creating extra rows in your knitting and that can create different effects. So why do knitters need short rows? Lots of reasons. To shape sock heels. To shape bust darts to create cool patterns and direction changes in their knitting, like shawls. Yep, to shape sideway knits, like a wider hip circumference in a side-to-side -side sweater. Absolutely, or to raise the back neck of your collar. Yeah, and to create shoulder shaping. Yes. So I feel like even when I've knit stuffed animals, the face, you know, pops out more. That Those were short rows. It's funny, when I knit my first short row, you know you have to pick up um, your stitch on your Pick up the wrap when you're coming back. When you do the wrap and turn method, yeah. I, I didn't do that, and it, it did not turn out as well as it should. Well, there you go. That was my first experience with short rows. So and it, let me tell you, it was just me being silly because it's super easy. Okay. Yeah. Well, I think there's a million different ways to use short rows, and there's no limit, really. Yeah. So we're going to talk you through five different kinds of short rows. So to avoid the hole that happens when you turn around in the middle of one of your rows, you have to work a wrap of some kind and that will squeeze the stitches together and camouflage. Otherwise, you're gonna be left with a hole. Yeah, and so there's yeah. lots of different ways to do this. Like Sir Knits a lot. I like big balls and I can't do that. <laughs> not those wraps. Not that so, kind right? of wrap. Okay. This is not that kind of wrap. Okay. But I feel like- Just making sure. I feel like maybe we should have a wrap like that in okay. the knitting world. So okay. get on it. On it. <laughs> so um, I know of five different types of short rows. Okay, well let's take a look at all of them because they're all slightly different. The first one I ever came across, the wrap and turn short row. Uh, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. <laughs> um, the next one that I did, which was excellent, German short row. Yeah, really, really good one, yeah. very simple. I also, uh, the yarn over short row is another one and I, I haven't tried that one very much. I have never heard of it. Okay, well, there you go. Japanese short row is number four. I've done that one. Loved Have it. Never yeah. Heard of that Tried one it. Yep. Yeah. And then there's, the, there's also the twin stitch shadow short row. Never Excuse heard me? of that one either. What the heck is that? I don't know. Uh, but we're going to figure it out. We are. We're, okay, the twin stitch shadow method is you basically you knit two stitches into one. It's sort of like a knit front and back yeah. almost and then decrease the extra on the next time you come around. Okay, well, that sounds really easy. Yeah. And, and I feel like that's the truth of all of them. They yeah. just pick your favorite because they're all going to do the same thing. None of them are difficult. Once you follow the instructions, yeah. you're going to be able to work your way through it. And like we said, it's just a little bit different way it yeah. appears on your knitting. Yeah. None of them hard. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at these examples. Let's do that. Okay. So here we have four swatches. Yes. So we're going to be able to show you a side-by-side -side comparison of four different short row methods. I know. And if you look at them like this, it looks very similar, the end results. Yeah. It's just the method that's a little bit different. This one right here, the brown one, is the wrap and turn. And I feel like I see that in lots of shawls um, and sure, sweaters and stuff too. I feel like it's a really commonly used wrap and, wrap and turn. And I think lots of knitters come across that one. Super easy. Very simple. Yeah. Yeah. What's the next one? This next one I have here is the German short rows. And I would have to say these are probably my personal favorite. Because I would agree. The method is very, you know, like one and in, two instructions. 
and it's very quick and easy and I love that it's very seamless. There's no picking up wraps on it, so I, I love that part of it. Yeah, and actually, um, just so you know, you can see a line here in our work. Yeah. That's worked uh, the short row on the right side of our work. Right. And then we have an example along here that's knit along the wrong side of our work. Yeah, because when you're working the stitches, this is stockinette, so pretend yeah. we've got a stockinette project, you're doing it on a knit stitch on one side and then a purl way on the other, and quite often you're treating those slightly differently to get the right result. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, this one up here is the yarn, yarn over. over. Yes. I had never heard of this one. I, me either. But I'm actually looking at this swatch and I'm loving how on the right side, there's, it's again, just like the other two, yeah. very seamless. And the, the pearl side is almost invisible. The pearl side so is beautiful. So I really beautiful. love, and swatching is a great way to practice these, yeah. these short rows, aren't they? Yeah. And this one here is the twin shadow stitch. Twin stitch shadow short row. Which I feel like there's a little more movement in here for me. I feel like there's other ones in here that sort of lay a little bit different. Right, because this is the one where you create the extra stitch and right. then you decrease it on yeah. the way back. Yeah. So that probably wouldn't be my short row of choice. But it's always good to learn. It I is really good to do. Learn. Like having those yeah. tools in your knitting tool belt, right? Yeah. Yeah. So we're missing one swatch, yeah. and it's the Japanese short row, but yeah. it's a really great one too. Uh, no one wanted to knit it. What? Okay, here's the thing with <laughs> Japanese short rows. That's my only tip get lots of those little interlocking stitch markers, the ones that open, yeah. because that is the tool you use. Instead of making a wrap, you use these little yeah. short rows to pull up a loop of your yarn. It it's sounds... actually a really great technique, and I knit it in a sweater, very seamless. Okay. I found the results really, really so great. So it was worth, worth maybe the It fussiness. is, it's not difficult, it's just something you need a lot of little yeah. stitch markers for. Yeah. True confession time, no word of a lie. I learned to do short rows, on Craftsy with Carol Feller. There was a, there's a class. There's actually more than one class, but that's how I learned to do my short rows. And she shows you lots of them, especially in the one, the essential short row techniques. She shows you the Japanese and lots of kind of techniques. So that link to that is gonna be in the description box below. Okay, you guys, and that class is available as part of Craftsy Unlimited. So we have a free trial membership for you. You can try out Craftsy Unlimited and watch the short row class for free. It's amazing. It's really, really great. Yeah. Okay. That was so fun dissecting all the short rows because I feel like it looks very similar in your end product, but there are different ways to do them. I loving learning these different things because yeah. as someone who this is my craft, I love to always learn yeah. and not better myself, but just different techniques that I can use in different places. I think it keeps things fun and fresh. And this really one do. for me was a, a great way to learn some new things. Yeah. yeah. It was amazing. So that's it. Short rows demystified. I loved it. I really love this because I think these are a great technique and it's super fun to learn a new way to do something. So that was really yes. great. Don't forget that link for your free trial membership is in the description box below. Absolutely, as well as the Carol Feller class yeah. for the short rows. We've had fun talking short rows with you. It was so great having you guys here today on Off Our Needles. Until next time, happy knitting. Happy knitting.